Well, howdy. Welcome back to my Print and See Build Series. In this video, we're going to cover everything to do with the Z-axis and finishing up some of the mods on the side here. Before we jump into all that, I also want to say we just passed 500 subscribers, so I want to say thank you so much for everyone who's subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you like what you see, please, please consider leaving a like or comment or subscribing. It really helps up the channel. I also want to acknowledge that last video you saw I got a haircut, and this video I'm missing my beard. I hope for the next video you don't have to see me lose any more hair. That is a natural concern of mine, but the least of my worries as I get into the electronics part of this process. As I said before, I don't really have that much experience in electronics, especially with high voltage like we're dealing with here. So it's going to be kind of a learning process with me, and my main goal is to not die and electrocute myself through this process. So if at the end of that I have a working CNC machine, all the better. A lot of people have commented that me going over the mistakes I made and what I learned from them is really helpful for them. I'm gonna put that at the end of the video, so feel free to skip ahead if you just wanna see that part. With all that said, no more delaying, let's get into the video. If you decide to go the wood plate route like I did, you will need to 3D print these risers for the linear rails. They have an orientation, they're a little bit off-centered with the holes, but it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, also, so because this is plywood, um, the recommendation is that you go through uh, and use bolts um, as much as you can. Um, obviously, for some of them, you can't. For my rails, um, I can't use bolts all the way through uh, because this will hit the uh, roller. So um, I'm using uh, wood screws for that. Um, not ideal, but it's temporary again, so it's fine. Um, I also pre-drilled the spots where they're supposed to go. Um, you can print these risers. They do have an orientation. They're a little bit longer on the top than they are on the bottom. Um, so they'll, those will line up like this. And then we're gonna put the rails on as well. Lining everything up is pretty easy. I slightly pre-drilled some pilot holes to help with the alignment. Once you do that, you can just line up the rails with the riser and screw them down. As you can see, I printed this piece twice, um, partly because this one melted a tiny bit, much of you can tell. The holes are a little bit off right there and it's just smaller altogether. So be careful about that. So um, when I put this on, I forgot that um, I'm missing something and that's one of the blocks. So uh, I'm gonna redo this and with the blocks. Um, I don't have the correct size screw, these are M6, to go all the way through the plate because uh, it's wood. Um, the aluminum plate's gonna be threaded in here. So the screw, when it goes through these two, will thread into the threading in the plate itself. Right now, because I'm doing wood, I'm going all the way through, um, through it and then I'm gonna put a, a nut on the end. So the next step is gonna to be to get this onto this plate. Um, obviously this spins, this goes, or hold on. So the next step, um, cause this goes in to the block like that. Uh, and then this is gonna stay stationary. And I got, this is gonna to have to go on like that so the plate can be on the top, this is the block. Um, I have a aluminum version of this, but I'm not using the aluminum one yet. Um, All right, so those are the M4 taps done. And now we'll do the M5. Uh, 
All right, well, there it is. <clears throat> I had a little bit of a, I think you can see it cracked a tiny bit. Um, I'm gonna move forward with it. I don't think it cracked all the way through. Um, I'll move forward with it and see what happens. I might have to replace it eventually, but we'll see. So the next step is to get on the ball screw. Don't wanna break it and we're on. All right. So now that we have it on there, the next step uh, is probably to put on these carriages um, on the rails. A um, couple notes on these. I would never take it off this little plastic rail it has in there. I made the mistake and a lot of my balls uh, fell out uh, in, the, in the ball bearings here. Um, there's a little channel in there, if, I'm not sure you can see it, uh, while the ball bearings ride on the rail. Um, so I'm gonna slide it on there and then I'm gonna loosen up these end caps on both ends. There are two screws here and then there are two more internal um, on both sides. Uh, I'm gonna loosen them and then adjust these end caps. Um, sometimes this whole end cap can be out of square with the main carriage. And so what happens is it will kind of grind a little bit or won't ride as smoothly. Uh, I've already degreased these of all the grease that was already packed in here. Um, the shipping uh, oil or shipping grease or whatever was in there. Uh, I just used some uh, alcohol to do that and I gave it an alcohol bath. Um, on two of mine, I actually took the whole thing apart. I wouldn't recommend it. They're not, it's not that hard, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, WD-40 will do great as well. Uh, so I'm gonna slide it on there. I'm gonna put on a, a grease zerk um, after I adjusted it, grease the whole thing up uh, and then put it on there. And then we are after that going to secure it in place uh, like this and put on our plate or a tramming plate. So that was a lie. <laughs> when I went to put on the Z-axis with the carriages on, the carriages slid right off. So I took them off and I mounted the Z-axis without the carriages on first. All right, I'm gonna try it here. So we're gonna loosen those two and loosen those two and uh, realign them. I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm just gonna do the top ones on each side because I don't wanna do it on the bottom. I think it'd be difficult, so. Somewhere on my rollers is a misaligned hole, which makes this whole process a little bit more difficult. I think when I do the aluminum plate, I might need to figure out the exact distance of all the holes or either that or redrill the rollers themselves. But anyway, the process is pretty simple as screwing down the plate to the aluminum angle on the bottom and the top roller. Next is the end caps for the actual Z roller itself. This is too long to use a standard 100 millimeter screw like I did for the Y beams. So what I did is I took a five millimeter threaded rod and I cut it to size. This is my first time cutting metal with the Dremel and it makes life so much easier. I used a hacksaw and some elbow grease for the aluminum angle and that turned out horrible. So I might go back and actually use the Dremel to clean that up once I go to remount the aluminum plate. As you can see here, I have the spindle mount and the tramming plate both mounted. Uh, it was the same process for the Z plate, so I just cut it for the sake of time. Now it's time for some mods, ladies and gentlemen. This is the cable chain mod. I think it might be easier to pre-drill these holes before you actually mount the frame together. I obviously did not do that, but it turns out pretty good at the end of this. I will link down below in the description the printed parts I used and anything I modified. First, I did a rough measure of where I wanted all the mounts to go so that it would obstruct the least amount of stuff as the gantry moves. I also would suggest you space them out better than I did. 
I would have liked to run them along the entire back of the gantry because on some points on mine there's a slight unsupported section at full extension but this really doesn't concern me much and is not a big deal it's more of one of those OCD quality of life changes. Once I knew everything was where I wanted I started to punch the holes for the drilling. After drilling everything it was time to break out my trusted tap and hand tap everything and then to mount them. The Y-axis belt parts are a little bit lower profile so that they hang lower. For those in the Discord community, Hodges does not like cable chains that have mismatched radii in the bend. So people think it's pretty funny to post photos of their mismatched cable chain radii. It always stirs up the pot and gets Hodges all irritated. For the mounting of this cable belt to the top, I designed a part to integrate it into the end cap. I now realize that I forgot a hole for routing the induction sensor wire, but I can fix them with a soldering iron for now. The part is designed to be screwed in from the back, which is a really cool feature that I added that adds some rigidity. I will update the hole in the center for the induction sensor wire and update this to Thingiverse. These are just a couple of the cool features that I added to my build that makes it kind of unique. I will go over the other mods that I did in the other parts of the videos, but for now, let's go over some of the mistakes I made. As you can see, I have the spindle installed with all the wiring and everything. That's going to be covered in the next part of this video. As far as the actual ZX's hardware, looking back on this whole process, I really think I would have buy the aluminum plates here instead of doing the wood ones. It's 150 bucks roughly, basically, to get it from the Discord community. People sold for really reasonable prices. That includes the actual spindle uh, mounting plate and the actual Z-axis plate itself. Uh, that would have been a lot easier. For me personally, I'm not sure it would have worked because one of the holes on one of my actual carriages, these rollers I have, I think it's the top one or the bottom one, is a little bit misaligned. So I need to drill my holes slightly, I think a millimeter or two millimeters higher than the typical of the actual standard plate. One mistake I did make, and I still haven't corrected it, is the actual ball screw nut on this axis is missing the greaser. Uh, that might be a small problem, but when I go to mill the aluminum one, I will add in the grease circ on that part. I did grease it up before, so it should be fine for now. Another thing I want to add to is my actual ball screw is about 50 millimeters too short. I have contacted the AliExpress store. It wasn't their fault, it was my mistake in ordering, but I'm gonna be ordering another one just to replace this one eventually when I get my aluminum plates. As far as the alignment goes for the actual Z-axis, it's hard to tell and too soon to tell. I think once I get this machine running on power and get the spindle running and we get to tramming it, it will determine how well I did in putting together those wood plates. I'm not 100% confident that I did it fantastically, but we'll get to that point. With using my cheap level and my phone and doing the really basic ways of checking, it looks pretty level to me, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Overall, as far as the whole Z-axis goes, there weren't too many mistakes made on my part. One thing I will mention is don't forget this block in the top, as you saw I did it and I had to re-put it in. Thank you all for coming on this journey with me. I know it was a longer video, so thanks for being patient and getting through all the content with me. It was just a lot to cover with the Z-axis. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. For those that have it, please consider doing so because it really helps out my channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to build your own print and see, all the information is down in the description below. If you want to just watch me fumble through trying to put together something that I have no clue what I'm doing with, well, tune in for the next part of this video. Thank you so much. See you guys next time.